Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 3 in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the FFAR Assault Rifle in Black Ops 3, which, if you haven't heard, is the new FAMAS. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to say this. The FFAR, the FFR, the FR, the Jafar. Not exactly sure, but I'll probably just call it the FAMAS and the FFAR as much as possible during this episode. Also wanted to give a shout out to It's Dansby, who supplied the gameplay today. I was not fortunate enough to unlock this weapon, which is available via supply drops only. However, he was, and he provided me with a whole gameplay of it for all of you to enjoy, so I'd appreciate it if you check out his channel. It's linked down there first in the description, and tell him thank you. He's also got several tests available for it on the recoil, both hip fire and aim down sights, which you may find useful. But let's go ahead and talk about the stats. The rate of fire is the highest in the assault rifle class in Black Ops 3 at 800 rounds per minute. Previously, the HBK-30 was the fastest firing assault rifle, but this one has replaced it. If you add rapid fire to the weapon, it'll increase the rate of fire up to 857 rounds per minute, which is still again highest in class, rapid fire. So that's very fast. I'm not sure if rapid fire is worth it, but it might be on this particular weapon. And of note, the FFAR fires faster than most submachine guns in Black Ops 3. If I'm not mistaken, only the VMP and Vesper fire faster than this weapon. And of course, it has much better range, so it can outperform the absolute devil out of them. Very, very fast firing weapon. However, the damage is rather low. It'll only deal 30 damage up close, 29 at most distances, medium and long, and at very long range it'll drop down to 22. What this means is that it will kill between 4 and 5 shots depending on your range, however most of the time it's going to be a 4 shot kill, and overall this is low damage for an assault rifle in Black Ops 3, low damage for an assault rifle in any COD game. It's not quite like the Black Ops 1 FAMAS which had a 3 shot range and was an absolute melt machine. The 4 shot range on this weapon, and it's only 4 or 5 shots, so this is the only number that's important, is 51 meters, which is the same as the HBK-30, and is actually really good. This is pretty insane 4 shot range, especially for a weapon that shoots this fast, it's going to give it a nice time to kill over range, and it also means that you are absolutely not going to need long barrel because the 4 shot kill range is longer than almost all of you are going to be able to control the recoil at anyway, so that's insanely good. And as far as time to kill goes, it has a slightly faster than average time to kill, but is excellent over range if you're accurate, compared to say something like the MX Garand or the XR2 or even the M8, the time to kill is actually not that fast. It's much more comparable to the HVK-30, but it is just a little bit faster than average. However, the big deal is it's excellent over ranges because the range is so excellent. It's got a very nice, consistent TTK over a lot of ranges. So you're probably thinking this gun is overpowered. I've actually seen several YouTube videos suggesting that the weapon is overpowered, and while I absolutely will not say that the weapon is weak, because it's not, it's actually quite strong, it does have several major major downsides that make it not so great a weapon in some situations. Most notably, it is the slowest reloading assault rifle in Black Ops 3. The reload cancel time is 1.8 seconds, which is slower than all of the other reload cancel times, and if you go through the full animation, it's 2.5 seconds, which is slower than all of the other animations, and if the weapon is empty, it'll reload even slower than this, which can be quite bad. So fast mags is extremely useful on the FFAR, and do keep in mind with the faster rate of fire and the 30 round magazine you're going to burn through your ammo really quickly and be reloading a lot so that's a lot of downtime where you're not able to shoot. Reload times aren't typically what we concern ourselves with when we're asking if a weapon is weak or strong, however, I should also point out that it has the slowest sprint out time and the slowest aim down sight time in the entire assault rifle class. It is tied with the Man of War on both of those statistics, so the Man of War actually has a slower ADS and sprint out time. This one they decided to add that to as well. It's got about 50 to 100 milliseconds slower on each one of those, so your ability to sprint into combat and ADS and spray people is going to be severely diminished. Actually, your ability to just ADS while standing still or just sprint to hip fire, both of those are diminished. So it is not a very good, let's say, aggressive, rushing, fast reaction kind of assault rifle. Despite the ability to shoot very fast and kill relatively quickly, you're going to have a slower reaction time here, which is quite bad. Next up on the list, the recoil is high. You're definitely going to need a foregrip for this weapon. I don't think many of you needed me to tell that. The Black Ops 1, the Black Ops 1 FAMAS had very high recoil. This one is just 
just as high and just as frustrating. You're definitely going to need foregrip to pull it back down, make it more manageable. Maybe even an ACOG sight because that also reduces recoil. We can talk about that one later on. And the high recoil is probably the biggest limiting factor on the weapon, though the annoying handling attributes are there. The recoil is really what's going to get you because it's going to cause you to miss a lot. It also has an overall poor hipfire spread. The hipfire stats on the FFAR are kind of all over the place. There are a few niche scenarios where it can slightly outperform other weapons, such as crouching or something like that. But overall, it has a wider hipfire spread than all of the other assault rifles. I think it's even wider than the Mana War and the Shiva and things like that. It performs very, very poorly with hipfire, so I'd recommend no hipfiring at all unless you're running a laser sight, which I don't think is a very good attachment on this weapon. So not accurate in any regard. And the overall summary of these statistics is that despite seeming like the perfect run and gun weapon, which it looks like by all measures, it shoots fast, decent damage, you could run and gun with it in Black Ops 1, or maybe being a better HBK-30 because it's got the same damage and range as the HBK-30, but it seems faster. It looks like it would be better than the HBK-30 in all regards. It's actually the exact opposite. This assault rifle is much better used playing defensively or boots on the ground or posting up behind cover. So the HBK-30, as I've been advocating it, is the best rushing assault rifle in Black Ops 3 because you've got a faster sprint out time and you've got faster uh, strafing and uh, really nice uh, hip fire and stuff like that. This one is the exact opposite. You've actually got a garbage ADS time, you've got a garbage sprint out time, you got garbage hip fire, you got garbage recoil, you got a long reload, you got a lot of frustra frustrating handling statistics that are going to slow you down if you play aggressive. However, the weapon has excellent range, it is possible to mitigate the recoil, and you can kill people pretty dadgum quickly if they walk into your line of sight, so I think this one is much better used posting up over cover, hosing people long ranges, and holding down choke points. As for how I would recommend using this weapon, I would say it is best with quick draw, foregrip, and fast mags. Iron sights are good enough where you shouldn't really need optics. It shouldn't be necessary. Optics are nice, by the way. Uh, quick draw is going to help you with that uh, sprint recovery and that faster ADS time running fast hands all the way. Oh, I run fast hands all the time anyway. I just assume that you guys too. Foregrip is pretty much a necessity to help with the recoil, and fast mags is also pretty much a necessity to help with the reloading. But with this setup, you should be much, much more deadly with your FFAR. There's some other attachments that work pretty well on it. It can also work okay with a silencer or recon sight. The silencer is because it's already got awesome range, so the silencer doesn't really hurt it that bad. At worst, at absolute worst, you'll have one more shot to kill. The recon sight helps reduce recoil, and I kind of wanted to put rapid fire on there, but I still don't think rapid fire is worth it on this weapon, though it may be for you. That's up for you to test, play with, and decide. And again, shout out to It's Dansby. I've got him linked down there in the description. This is all of his gameplay, and you can see some of the testing on his channel. Overall verdict on this weapon, not OP. Very strong? Yes. Can it be very annoying when you get hosed with it? Yes. But it's not OP because it still fills a niche. It's kind of like a worse HBK-30 in what the HBK-30 is supposed to be good at. It's kind of like the anti-HBK-30, almost. So it fills a new niche, it fills a new void, it can be countered, and it's not broken, in my opinion. Then again, I have not used it yet. Hopefully, I'll unlock it in a supply drop sometime soon. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. The previous episode was on the Razorback, and the next episode is going to be on the very goofy L4 Siege. Drifter out probably seen it. I'm not sure if I should say Fafar, FFR, Jafar. I really don't know. I'm gonna go with FFAR, I guess. FFR, FFAR, fucking shit.